Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining us uh, this evening if you are in Australia and uh, good morning if you're in the UK where Kate is based. Um, I'm Amanda from the Holistic Equestrian. I am so excited and so happy and privileged to be back doing these guest speaker sessions. I think the last one I did was back June, July time. So it's it's really nice to be back um, and, and having these guest speakers on and, and learning lots. Um, it's not only an opportunity to um, share knowledge with you guys, but it's also an opportunity for me to learn as well. I'm fascinated by some of the things that um, we're presented with on these sessions. So we are joined today with um, Kate. Kate Saunders is based in the UK. And Kate is from Be At One Healing With Horses, and she's going to talk to us this evening about geopathic stress. Have I said that right, Kate? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it's um, something that I've never kind of looked into very much, and I, I think it's very fascinating, and I think you guys will all find it highly fascinating, interesting, and something just to put a different spin on when we're working with our horses and we're using energy work there's so many different things that we can tap into and this is one thing that um, i'm sure has profound um, impact um, on, on um, ourselves and our horses so i'm going to hand over to kate to kick start the presentation and do a bit more of an in-depth um, introduction we are live using Streamyard, so at any time if you've got any comments or any questions if you pop them in the chat box, but please uh, put your name because sometimes StreamYard just says Facebook user and we don't know who you are. So it'd be really nice um, just to add your name if you've got a question or a comment. Um, and then um, depending on where Kate is in her presentation, we might come back to questions at the end just to see how it all flows. But um, yeah, welcome and thank you very much for joining us and I hand over to you, Kate. Thank you so much, Amanda, and uh, thank you for letting me share um, things I've learned with your community. Um, so I'm going to share my screen straight away, and hopefully uh, it'll work. Oh, it just disappeared again. <laughs> um, just click on click on to share it again, Kate. There we go. Okay. That should work. So, I think, like I said, Amanda, I, I can't see anything except for the presentation, so I won't be able to see any questions if there are any. But like you say, if, if there's a moment, you know, where I pause and it's good to jump in, then please do, or I can obviously answer it at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking today about possible impact of environmental energies on your horses and your own health. Um, so just quickly a bit about me. Um, so I'm an energy healing practitioner. Um, I'm a certified emotion co-practitioner, body co-practitioner and healing remembered practitioner. And the, the one thing that I'm super, super passionate about is uh, both horses and humans just living happy, healthy lives. And I really do believe we have the ability to do that if we're given the right conditions. And my quest for kind of optimum health for me and my horses is kind of sent beyond this learning path of some of the things that I'm going to be talking about today. And uh, I don't know about you, Amanda, but when I got my first horse, so that's Safi, who's the chestnut, Sarafina. Um, uh, I remember I was all excited. I was, you know, researching things, getting books and joining Facebook groups. And I was really quite overwhelmed with the amount of issues that people have and i just thought my goodness like you know what is going on in the world with these poor horses and their health and you know and the same goes for people you just hear about so many people having uh, health problems and and things like that so um yeah that's kind of my passion is to just ensure kind of good health for us all uh, and then, sorry, I should introduce Elara as well. She's the bay uh, on the left there. Um, and they're both named after angels because I call them my angels. <laughs> um, okay, so just a couple of things to note before I kick off. Um, <laughs> this is just a bit silly. It's one of my favorite jokes. I don't know if you know that 
uh, Austin Powers, me, this is, what's this? It's me in a nutshell. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a good impression Safi's doing of that joke. My friend caught her mid-roll there. Um, and, you know, really, I'm just touching on these things today. And it's all about bringing this information into other people's awareness. And, you know, it's not for one of overwhelming people like, oh, my God, another thing to think about. But, you know, these things are important because our environment is important because we live in it 24 seven. So we want to make sure that, you know, it's got good energy for us. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I'll just be touching on these things. And it's just another thing to have in your toolkit. So if you are having issues with your horses or yourself, you can kind of think, oh, more about my environment you know I, I remember that little presentation I heard and you know something might sort of click in your head and you think maybe it's related to that instead of all of these other things that we've been investigating um so I'm going to refer to non-beneficial energies or noxious energies I try not to use the word negative energies because that word negative has a lot of connotations to it um and it's not uh, obviously, again, to, to put fear in people, you know, um, fear obviously weakens our immune system and can make you more susceptible to these energies. So really, we're just coming from a place of empowerment and knowledge and knowing that there is something we can do about these things. Um, and yeah, so with particularly with geopathic stress, which we're obviously going to be talking about, um, there's kind of a little equation here as to how much it can affect you. And we are talking about sort of very, very long periods of time uh, remaining in this particular energy that obviously can then cause you to, to feel unwell. So this little equation kind of has the radiation intensity. So that means the particular geopathic stress that you might be exposed to, how bad it is exposure duration so that might be how long you're staying in it so that could be for your horse in their stable or it could be uh, yourself sleeping in in a spot with geopathic stress so you know that could be sort of eight ten hours exposed and then also we've got the constitution of the person who is exposed so some people some horses it might not affect at all um, but other people could be more susceptible, other horses more susceptible to these energies. And the kind of culmination of those things kind of equals the resulting sort of damage or, or issues that you might be having. Okay, so, oh, this is where I went a bit fancy with some animation. Um, okay, so another thing I'm very, very passionate about is... Um, us horse owners, guardians, whatever we want to call ourselves, to focus on ourselves and our own health as much as our horse's health. Because it's not, it, it, it potentially is even more important, purely because you are the caretaker of your horse. You need to be there to look after them. You need to make money to afford to have them and those things. Um, so, so obviously that's really important. But the other other things that might come into play is, you know, your horse could be taking on your stuff, your, your stress, your emotional baggage. Um, and, you know, you could potentially be trying to treat your horse for something when actually part of the problem is the stuff that they're taking on from you. And that's not to kind of blame you or anything, because, you know, it's happened to me and it still happens sometimes. Um, but it's it's just a, something to be aware of and to know that, you know, you are important in the equation as well. Because you could be on a sort of vicious cycle of treating your horse, it comes back, treating, treat, and then you're like, why, why is this happening? And then you go, okay, well, if I just focused on me for a bit, got my health really, you know, really great. Uh, oh, and then maybe magically my horse's problems <laughs> uh, go away. I don't know if you've seen similar things like that, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, and also, you know, this is definitely for me, um, my horses have kind of come into my life because we've shared similar, um, problems and similar issues. So we're actually on a path together, healing similar things within ourselves. So obviously, we, again, we need to focus on ourselves as well as our horse. Um, and 
you, you know, because you could be in an energetic match, you know, because you, you've been through these same traumas or same illnesses and things like that. Um, so yeah, so that's something I'm very pas passionate about. And through my work with, with horses and my clients, I kind of have grouped sort of things into particular areas where we look at, I talk about relationship with self. So that could be your past experiences, traumas, injuries, um, you know, your emotional baggage or your horse's emotional baggage. So that, that kind of groups that into their relationships with their self. Talk about relationships with others. So relationship with other horses, other people, other animals. Again, there could be energetic exchanges going on that may not be great for particular individuals and you have to sort of figure out why that's going on. Um, internal environment, very important. Um, you know, microparasites, feed, what the composition of feed we're giving them, hay and grass, etc. And then lastly, external environment, um, and that's geopathic stress, toxins, and obviously that's the one that we're going to be focusing on today. And, you know, obviously, Amanda, a bit like you with your you know, name of your business, Holistic mm -hmm. Equestrian, you know, we've got to look at all of these things. Yeah. And, yeah, they're all connected in some way as well. So, you know, you can't just go, oh, it's just this. Um, there's going to be pieces of the puzzle. I talk about my journey has been a bit like one of those puzzles I don't know if you've ever seen them where you get the puzzle and it's got a picture on the box, but that's not actually the puzzle in the box. <laughs> so, so that's mine. But I've actually done one of those jigsaws before. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about uh, geopathic stress. Um, so the Earth has a, a natural electromagnetic field and that's um, 7.83 hertz. That matches the range of the human brain waves when we're in what's called the alpha mode which is like the relaxing meditative mode and that's why we're often told you know to go out into nature to, to help relieve stress and things so we can come into the same sort of resonance and balance with that kind of uh, natural electromagnetic field of the earth um, now, when the, this electromagnetic field is distorted, that's when we can kind of give it the term geopathic stress. And, you know, there are lots of sort of different theories as to why. And within geopathic stress, one of the big things that's talked about are water veins. So these are sort of rivulets or channels of water flowing under the earth. So that could be from, you know, ra rainstorms and, and things like that. And, and as the water flows, if it's in certain grounds where there's lots of minerals, it can actually create a charge so that then the charge from that water flow um, kind of emanates up towards the surface. Um, so, that's, so that's one of them in particular with um, water veins. But then we also got to think about um, our, our human emotions and stuff and how much and um, that impacts the earth because it seeps into the earth and then can enter into these um, channels and energy lines and, and veins. So yes, it's called geopathic stress, you know, geo obviously meaning earth um, from the Greek and, and pathos also from the Greek for suffering. And, um, you know, the, the stress equates to the general terms for the energies radiating from the earth that can then cause discomfort to animals or humans above it so so they they are under this geopathic stress and it's actually been known about for many many thousands of years and you know for example the romans would let sheep uh, sheep <laughs> they would let sheep graze on um areas before they uh, actually build there and what they would do it's obviously not very pleasant but they would dissect the sheep and check their innards to see if you know they had any issues and, and whether it would be a good healthy place for them to build <clears throat> okay so yeah there are a variety of different earth energies that can be found and i'll mention a book at the end if you're interested in learning more um a lot of like i say a lot of people when they think of geopathic stress they think of water veins like I've already mentioned, um, but we've also got things like earth energy lines, earth energy channels, 
toxic lines, which are kind of man-made through things that uh, we do on the earth. Um, something called the blind head spring. So these are areas of water that, that can't come out of the earth for, for whatever reason, and, and that can cause a buildup of energies. We can have energy sinkholes, and we can have human intent lines, and they're also called ley lines. And again, they can potentially carry a lot of human emotion um, more of the kind of non-beneficial emotions. So we've just got a little diagram here showing you um, uh, there's obviously a house there and um, there's potentially these geopathic lines running through the house and in particular geopathic stress lines when they cross they can make an even more sort of noxious energy point. Um, so it's showing you here obviously someone's got a bed above geopathic stress lines crossing and you know that is not a good place to put your bed um, we'll talk a bit more about kind of you know, the effects for horses and people but one thing if you do have trouble sleeping you could just experiment life's an experiment just try moving your bed see what happens <laughs> um, other things to sort of note from this diagram geopathic stress lines can cause damage to vegetation uh, tree cancers, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment as well. Um, and they can also cause accident areas. So, you know, we hear a lot about these kind of accidents, kind of black spots. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that can be due to uh, geopathic stress because some people, if they're driving through it, if they're sensitive to geopathic stress, they could actually lose consciousness or, you know, become momentarily disorientated or something like that. Um, so that can actually happen. Um, and geopathic, uh, lightning likes geopathic stress lines. So it can potentially hit uh, areas of geopathic stress as well. Okay, um, right. So this is where I'm going to just start sharing a bit about my story and how I kind of came across all of this stuff um, and what sort of led me to now work in it, really. Um, not the best photo of my two guys. <laughs> uh, this day we were having them thermal imaged and I had to tie their hair up and I'm useless at that kind of stuff. <laughs> it was all, uh, you know, Ella is not very happy about it, obviously. It's happy, like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> um, they're like chalk, chalk and cheese, my two. One, one loves what the other one hates, so yeah. <laughs> Um, so you can see here they are in the, their stables. So, you know, everything I'm going to say is really going to sort of promote the fact that we shouldn't really be keeping our horses in stables. And, you know, this is obviously quite a contentious subject and um, some horses, for whatever reasons, may have to be kept in a stable. And yeah, that's fair enough. Um, but what we want to do, therefore, is make sure the environment in the stable is beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. um, because otherwise we could be counteracting why we're keeping them in there. And I'll, again, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so the reason sort of my issues started coming about, um, Safi started to refuse to come in. Um, she would, she would come in a certain, she'd come out of the field, we'd have quite a walk, she'd come in a little bit, and then she would just lose it. She, like, I can't even explain her behaviour, it was just so abnormal. And um, I, I know, you know, she's my heart horse, I know she would never ever do anything to hurt me, you know, I don't believe horses want to hurt people anyway. Um, and, you know, she was really trying to tell me something, and I just, I was you know, at my wits end trying to figure out what the problem was. Um, and then the other thing was lower, you know, she didn't really like being in a stable. She would bang on a door. She would be one of those horses has a messy stable, you know, everything's everywhere the next day. Looks like a lot of urinating going on. She would barge out when I'd get there. Um, and whilst all this was going on, I was also having problems in my home. So it was like we were both sort of mirroring each other in my life and, and in their lives. Um, and I was lucky enough to be working with a mentor who had, she didn't know herself about geopathic stress, but she said, have you looked into it? And I was like, 
oh no, I've not heard of that. I'll look into it. So I did. Um, so here we have got a picture um, of kind of the area where my horses were living. Um, so the red arrow is pointing towards the area where Safi wouldn't cross. So the yellow lines represent water veins that were found. And so that particular one, we would have to walk, you know, past where the red arrow is and down and around to the um, buildings at the top of the picture there. And she just would not walk through that point. And um, I also I put a blue arrow, so that's where uh, I would feed them their hay because, you know, they had other horses around them. I thought they can all have a nice chat. <laughs> um, and it turns out that that was near a crossing point, so that's not mm. beneficial either. So, again, it's not, it's not just indoors, but, you know, in the stables, we've got to think about these things. It's thinking about places in their fields where um, kind of, I want to say where we force them to go, but you know what I mean? It's like you have to go and drink there because that's where the water trough is. Okay, but is that a good environment for you or where I'm putting your feed? Is it possible for you to stay there for a long time? Is it is it a good idea? Um, one day I'd put it um, a little further up in the middle of the field, their, their hay, and they didn't touch it at all. And I was like, that's really weird. But now I know why, because they were probably like, oh, we don't want to stand there. <laughs> um, Okay, so so yeah, so we had that cleared, and then I, I started learning about it more myself. And I, I that, those were just water veins, but I then wanted to, you know, make sure the property was very energetically clean. Um, so the blue arrow at the bottom there is showing the um, stable block where my horses were. So Eloa had a water vein running through her stable. I had a water vein running through where I slept. <laughs> that me and the lower were sharing experiences um and you can see there's there's quite a lot of stuff going on i, I don't think i can point with my can you see my yes uh, yeah can see my stuff. yeah um you know a lot of energetic activity here and um you know what i've highlighted i've highlighted the water veins we had a toxic line running through the yard an earth energy line uh, and some earth energy channels. And again, these can carry these non-beneficial energies that <coughs> emanate above the ground. And when I say emanate above the ground, they, it can go quite high. It's not just sort of surface level. It can go a couple of meters. Even in sort of apartment blocks, if you've got a water vein running below the building, you could feel it at the, you know, the very top. Wow. So um, next to a lower, so it's probably around about here, there was a horse who had uh, used to get chronic laminitis. Um, and so he would be put on box rest. And, you know, now I'm thinking like, oh, my goodness, he's put on box rest, but he's, he's stable, is potentially being affected by these things. So it's not necessarily the most beneficial environment for him to be in box rest, whether he should actually be on box rest or not. And the reason I say that is because I've done all this clearing, cleared my house, la la la, and things kind of got back to normal. <laughs> and um, and then I started having problems again, and I'm thinking, oh no, what is this? And I, I probably a bit like you, Amanda, you know, with healing, it's layers. We peel yeah. up the layers and we expose the next set of things going on. <laughs> and um, I, I say to my clients, it's a bit like, Oh, I always forget the name of it. Uh, Whack-a-mole. <laughs> you know that game at the fun fair? Like, oh, we got that one. Yeah, we got that one. <laughs> I want to get to the point where there's no more moles. Um, so, yeah, so I started having problems again. And so I'm thinking, right, what could this be now? And and what happened was, especially in lower, she got quite pulsy in her feet. Um, and it was summertime. And... I would bring them in in the daytime because so many horse flies, you know, especially I'd bring them in, especially when it was really hot. Yeah. But they, they didn't want to come in. Um, and, yeah, they were getting heat in their feet. And I was thinking, you know, what is going on here? And something was telling me, and it was the same for my home as well, something was telling me that there was something still in the stables that was affecting them. And, and I know the first thing someone would say when 
you get sort of heat in the feet and pull, you'd be like, take them off the grass, take them off the grass. Um, but my intuition was telling me, and this is just for my situation, so I'm not saying that everyone should do this. Um, my intuition was telling me, do not keep them in the stable. They have to go out onto the grass. So I did that and I, you know, I did some energy clearing and you know, their feet were fine. But I was still trying to figure out what, why was that happening? Now, what it turned out was, um, so we've got something called technopathic stress. So we kind of group this into geopathic stress because it's an energy that is affecting the earth, essentially, but it's also affecting us living on the earth. Um, and what we had was within the stable, actually, let me just go back to the picture, uh, right where, where all this activity was going on, there was a big electrical unit switchboard box I don't know what they're called um, and we used to have a lot of problems with the electricity in, in that uh, in the yard like the lights would always blow and things like that and that that's another sign you, you might have geopathic stress or issues with your electricity like yeah, not wired up correctly so, you know, something I didn't know back then, <laughs> but I do now, like um, we all obviously think electricity flows through wires and yeah, it does, but it's really actually more vibrating along the electrons in the wires. Um, and it emits a field around the wire, um, an electromagnetic field. So if there are electrons around it, they're also going to vibrate and could be potentially, you know, um, would be energy, electrical energy flowing through them. So in this, in this uh, image here, you can see, you can take one of those strip lights and hold it under, under these um, very high voltage uh, electrical cables and it will, they will actually light up. So you're not connected to any, you know, anything electrical, you're just standing there waving it in the air like a lightsaber. <laughs> and, um, it will light up. So um, this is kind of showing you that, um, you know, there there are currents running through through mm -hmm. the air. And this is a this is a very important thing to note if in your bedrooms, if your bed has metal in it, metal wireframe or a metal mattress, and it could be near like a PowerPoint plug socket, you could potentially be uh, your bed could be, um, what's the word, uh, conducting electricity, mm -hmm. as you see. So that could be another reason if you suffer from like insomnia, it could be a reason because your body is conducting electricity mm -hmm. for your sleep, which is not good for you. <laughs> so um, basically what was happening, or I, you know, I'm not an electrician, um and you know i eventually decided it was the best thing for my horses to move them and i think amanda you might have done something similar when you realized the environment wasn't good for them mm -hmm. um, uh, but the the unit itself it will be emitting emfs but also what can happen on a lot of rural properties and farms it, there's a lot of literature about this happening in dairy farms um you can have a problem with what's called stray voltage or incorrect grounding um, basically meaning that there's an electrical charge running through the ground and we also have um, these earth grids that are known as curry grids or hartman grids um, within the earth um, and these can actually you know the current can actually flow through these grids and um, I believe that this is what was going on in, in the stables and particularly where I am I'm in Cornwall in the UK. Um, we've got a lot of, there's a lot of mining that goes on in Cornwall, a lot of minerals in the ground and these things can conduct electricity. Uh, and I actually recently had a client uh, or, or just uh, somebody inquired who put granite down in their stable and then they started having problems. And, you know, I said, I think maybe the granite is, conducting electricity from some somewhere <laughs> um but uh yeah so uh you know this this can be corrected with rods and things and that's what i did it was quite interesting actually the day i did that my horses weren't in 
they were out in the field and there was another horse in and he was watching me and I'd never seen his eyes look so big. He was just watching me douse for these energy lines and put these copper rods down um, as if to say, can you come and do it in my stable? <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Um, so, so yeah, so this is obviously a big thing to think about. Um, and now that kind of gets me on to talking about electrical hypersensitivity. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of veering a little bit away from the geopathic stress, but like I said, it's all linked. Um, and, you know, I now realize that this is what was going on for my girls. Um, they, they had a biological, well, I call it biological trauma, but um, they had a lot of microparasites um, from mold um, and fungal toxins, and, and we're working on eradicating those. But um, if you have those types of things in your body, you can be very sensitive to EMFs because if you get near to something with a lot of electrical charge, the the mold will think it's being attacked and it will start um, excreting toxins and that can make you feel like really just yucky. Mm. Um, so that's uh, one form of, of why you might be sensitive to EMFs, but there, there are a couple of others here, as you can see, physical trauma to, to your nervous system. You can have chemical trauma that could be from, you know, drugs, pesticides, metals, things like that. Um, electrical trauma, if you've had uh, high, you know, multiple shocks and that kind of thing, lightning strikes. Um, I think, I don't know this for sure, but both my horses were rescue horses. Uh, Aloha has um, two scars on her rear, and I think she might have been poked with an electrical mm -hmm. of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, she really hates electric fencing she won't go near it she's like no mm -hmm. don't want anything to do with that um and then yeah also impaired immune system can uh, uh that as well so um yeah let's talk about potential signs and effects of the geopathic stress on horses so I put that stable so you might be in a yard where you know every horse that goes into that stable has some sort of condition and, um, you know, these conditions, they can really vary. You can have the horse that can be really sluggish and sleepy in the stable, or you can have the opposite end of the spectrum of the highly anxious and I want to get out of the stable. And, you know, it, it could um, invoke issues like crib biting, wind sucking and weaving because, you know, they're being kept in an environment that is not good for them and they're trying to cope in some way. Uh, and that might be why they create, develop these sort of behavioural or physical issues. Um, and it's not just the stable. Um, we need to think about, you know, um, maybe a horse might never settle in the arena in the school. Maybe there's lots of lighting in that arena that has got a lot of EMFs and the horse has EMF sensitivity. Um, spooking on hacks or treks, you know, you might, you might, when you go out, you might know, oh, my horse doesn't like that spot. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be water veins crossing in that spot. It could be, uh, I mean, I haven't talked about it here, but a lot of something I deal with a lot is spirits and, and uh, entities. And this isn't <laughs> really geopathic stress, but again, it, it does affect our horses. And, uh, mm -hmm where I moved my horses to, I created a track and Eloa wouldn't go around one part of it. And I'd cleared all the geopathic stress and things. And I was like, what's, what's going on here? There was someone who, uh, a spirit that used to live there. Um, he, wasn't, he wasn't a nasty spirit. Um, uh, he had a cat and he was worried the horses were gonna trample his cat, bless him. Um, but I obviously I helped him to the light now with his cat and, and they're happy. And then the very next day, Eloa went and stood in that area and uh, had a nap. <laughs> so that was really <laughs> nice to see. Um, yeah, uh, unsettled in the field, jumping out of the field. We had a horse that would do that all the time. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of geopathic stress through that field as well as 
the electrical pylons above her. So I think she was just saying, like, I just don't like this field. Um, so, you know, they're really trying to tell us something. And, you know, we do, they're not being naughty. You know, it's like we've got to listen uh, to, to what it is they're saying. Um, yeah, and I just I just got here, which I, I forgot to mention, but, um, you know, the, the horse that I mentioned that had cr chronic laminitis, he, he unfortunately left before I figured all of this out. But like I say, he was kept in his stable and he was, he was even closer to this electrical unit. And, you know, you know, I can't say for sure because we didn't, we couldn't, I couldn't do anything with him, but I believe that keeping him in that stable was, wasn't helping the issue. Um, yes. so, uh, it's just, you know, interesting kind of thing to think about. Um, some other things, sleep deprivation, and again, if you're keeping them in the stable, overeating or overweight, they might be eating to compensate the energies. Eloa did this, she would just eat and eat, because that was like comfort eating for her, because she just didn't really want to be in that energy. Laminitis, we've talked about that, not drinking enough. But energy of the water quality, that was interesting. Uh, I tuned in with Safi stopped drinking her water in her stable and the energy level was zero. <laughs> so basically wow. she wasn't getting any goodness from that water. And I, I learned a technique to, to bring it up. And the first day I did that, she went and drank from her water bowl. So that was a relief. So I got some, <laughs> oh, it worked, yay. <laughs> um, yeah, difficulty to heal, hair growth, hoof growth, that obviously can be to do with their immune system, miscarriage, fertility issues. Mm. Um, yeah. So some physical signs of geopathic stress. So if you're thinking like, oh, do I have this problem? Well, you know, it's, it's kind of, it kind of is everywhere, a bit like EMFs is but there are going to be some places that are more geopathically stressed than others um and you know there are animals that like geopathic stress zones like cats um cats love them uh, bees wasps snakes mosquitoes fungi um moles molehills i like my whack-a-mole <laughs> um bacteria and mold so if you have um very heavily geopathic stress area the the possibility of mold you know is quite quite high because we're just talking about the energies you know it's a it's a very low level energy area and therefore mold that's very low level energy um is going to like that area um you know so so places like your where you store your hay you know has that got geopathic stress running through it um so some things to look out for cracks in building foundations or bricks and structures um areas in your home or barn that are inexplicably damp um constant electrical breakdowns like i mentioned before your light bulbs blowing and things like that um malformed trees may grow on geopathic stress lines you can see that in that picture there um and uh also trees might you know the growth might be stunted they might not uh fruit uh, or bloom um, and they also might be susceptible to disease um, but again there are certain types of trees and plants that like geopathic stress and then certain ones that don't i'm not a massive gardener but i've learned that people say you know if, if the plant doesn't like where it's growing you move it and and then that yeah. makes sense because it might be growing in the geopathic stress area um and then i mentioned about lightning already and also about uh accident kind of prone spots um, could be to do geopathic stress. Okay, so um, this list here, I've, I'm, I'm sort of talking about horses, but I keep referring to people too, because like I'm just passionate about us humans being healthy too. And these are some of the effects that uh, geopathic stress could have on people. Um, so insomnia, unable to sleep, grinding your teeth whilst you're sleeping, feeling tired when you wake, you know, just the general fatigue you can't shake, feeling ill, depressed, stressed, nausea in the mornings, night sweats, nightmares, anxieties and unwillingness to leave the house, unexplained headaches, low energy levels, 
babies moving around in their cot, not sleeping well. Children might insist that a monster lurks in their room, um, rheumatism, hormone problems, miscarriage, infertility problems. Yeah, I'm sure there are more. And like I say, it's just how it affects the individual. And um, it's just important to, to take into account our environment because we think it, it can't hurt us because we're not aware of it. <laughs> um, and, and all these things that I've mentioned here as well can also be related to mold if you've got mold issues in your home and you've, and you've been affected internally by mold. Same goes for horses. Okay, so what can you do to help create a beneficial environment? Um, clear clutter and dust. So I think we've probably all seen these photos, haven't we, of yards that are just sparkling and pristine and you just think oh god how can how is that possible <laughs> um but it helps it's important you know to to make sure that you've got uh, a clean environment for you and your horse ventilation really important for both again for both you and your horse in the stables uh, and at home um reducing stabling time if possible and again I, you know i've mentioned it i you know i think horses should just have the choice because if they have the choice they can go i know that that spot isn't good for me so i'm not going to stand there you know yeah. um, they know they've got intuition um but a bit like us horses some horses have lost their intuition because they've just mm. so much gunk <laughs> from us um and then like i've mentioned for yourself if you think you might have an issue move your bed try sleeping in a different room how does that happen? How, how does it, you know, what happens? Um, do you sleep better? You know, and again, it's all, you know, it could be for like, it might not be an overnight thing. You might have to do it for a week or two and, and see, you know, uh, a lot, of, we're all sort of looking for instant quick fixes, but it's not always the case. Um, crystals can help, you know, you create a nice environment, analysis, rose quartz, shungite, um, I've got this image here of a book. Uh, this is my, one of my mentors, um, Heal Your Home Too. So if you want to learn about it yourself and, and you know, uh, douse your home and help clear it and your horse's space, you can. You can reach out to someone to check for geopathic stress and clear your space. <coughs> this is another, you know, important one. Work on clearing your own energetic baggage. Because if, you, if, you know, we've mentioned about the earth, and all these um, energy lines in the earth that can be absorbing our stuff. Well, why don't we just not give it stuff to absorb? <laughs> and then, you know, we, you know, the planet will just be a, a much, uh, you know, more peaceful place if we work on doing that ourselves rather than relying on uh, the outside to, to do it for us. Um, uh, and, you know, I'm very passionate about detoxing as well for, for horses and people. Um, and one thing I always say is just look after your liver because it's really important in that uh, getting rid of toxins from the body, but also uh, eliminating the root cause of any particular toxins and geopathic stress can be one of them. Mm. Um, so this is something I do. So a bit like you, Amanda, I do all my, well, I do all of my energy work by distance so i can work with anyone anywhere in the world so if anyone would like to get in touch then please do and uh yeah this is my website be it one healing.com and you can contact me at be it one healing at gmail.com and this is me with cheeky chop sappy <laughs> and, and yeah, that, that's uh, everything <laughs> is there any questions? let me just um, I'll just close the um, presentation down just so people can see it fully. There we go. Um, yeah, if anybody's got any questions, um, you can ask away in the chat box. If you can't think of any at the minute and something crops up as you're kind of pondering over the information that's been shared today, you can always ask um, in the Facebook group. Um, you can get in contact with Kate personally, you know, any way that you feel that you want to reach out and ask some questions, feel free to do so. The um, session will be um, uploaded and sent out 
um, over the weekend or, or maybe Monday. So um, there'll also be that as well, um, and it'll be available on replay. Um, I do have to apologise for getting my times mixed up. Um, <laughs> and I know that there were people that wanted to be here um, but couldn't when they realised that um, I'd messed up the time. So um, I, I do apologise for those that are having to watch replay that did want to to be present. So I am I am sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there's any questions, Kate. Um, we've got a couple of people that have said hello. Um, Pamela, um, who is here in WA, she said hi. And then there's a couple of people that have said hello, a lady from Spain said hello. Um, at the beginning, I was just explaining that if anybody writes any comments because we're using StreamYard, it just comes up as Facebook user. So hello um but I'm, I'm sorry it doesn't come up it doesn't come up with the name unfortunately but um we really do appreciate you you watching um but yeah if there's if there's no questions kate is there anything else that you wanted to add before we finish the session um I think I've spoken enough <laughs> <laughs> just, I just wanted to check. I've got some I've been taking notes so I've got some uh, some notes to go through. Um, that was it was really really interested, um, and I was just thinking I've got a um, our electric unit is in our walk-in wardrobe on our, in our bedroom. So that, I've just yeah that's what I was thinking about in terms of sleep and and things for for myself and being that close to the electric box, if you like. So yeah. That would be, yeah do you that, have trouble sleeping or? um occasionally up and down depending on yeah kind of what else is going on um but i think yeah when you're stressed i think like you were saying when you're stressed anyway and then you've got these other things kind of going on and impacting and your immune system's lowered it just other things hit you from different directions more yeah. than they might do if you're just kind of on top and if you're looking after yourself more exactly it, yeah yeah, if you're not doing those things that there's things like this that really do kind of have that impact. And the same as the horses, if they've, you know, if they're stressed, if they um, had a, a change of yards, if they've got new companions, if they've got a new owner, all that stress impacts them and lowers that immune system. And it's just sort of like a window for other things to affect them. If you yeah, like. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I actually, I forgot to mention it was actually Safi who who said to me, so I, I'm a bit like you, I don't do animal communication as like my full thing, but sometimes things come through. And it was one day, probably not long after I'd got her and I, I was standing in a field and I was staring at her and I was worrying because there was sort of an issue that I was needed to sort out and I couldn't get the person out to see her. And I was just like, oh, what am I going to do? And you know she's fine. She's eating. She's just like and and um and I just heard these words come through to me. Just focus on yourself. And <laughs> it's like it, it's a mad thing, isn't it? The <laughs> best piece of advice. Yeah, the best piece of advice anyone could ever have given me. Yeah. Just focus on me. Yeah, keeping yeah. myself calm, doing what I do. Yeah, I can't get the person for two weeks. It's yeah. okay. No one's gonna die. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And and in any situation we go in, like just focusing on ourselves, how how we are reacting, a bit like when we're working with the horses. I mean, I don't really do much with mine; they're non-ridden. We just, you know, have fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it's you've seen something that could be potentially scary to your horse. Mm -hmm. You don't then go. Oh my god, it's attractive. Oh my god, oh my god, what are we gonna do? And then your horse is like, Oh my god, she's nervous about something. I don't know what it is yet, but <laughs> and it's like, come in. <laughs> yeah. it'd just be like, Okay, it's a tractor. You know, so what? <laughs> I remember when I had to move my horses, we walked them and we had every everything, we had a motorbike, tractor, you know, and they were all fine and I know partly they're fine because I didn't let it get to me. I used to, I used to, but that was doing the energy work on myself, in, entering into new situations. Like I just don't have that fear anymore. It's just yeah. like, oh, it's just a new situation. How how are we going to deal with it? You know. <laughs> so, 
working on yourself is really important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think it's we focus quite a lot on on trying to fix everything. And some things we can't fix. And the one thing we can do is always sort of take care of ourselves more. If you know, if nothing else, that's the one thing that we can try and and focus on a little bit more. And even if I know some of the healing work that I've done, the horses aren't ready, but you can be doing your work and your thing and and they sort of automatically you know they just slip in along the way to and they will they will benefit from that anyway even if it's not direct work with them yeah exactly, exactly. the whole yeah. world benefits from you working on yourself and yeah. um, i think a lot of people sometimes feel like oh i'm being really selfish because i'm having like a spa day and it's like well no because you're helping the world yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by relaxing and you know looking after yourself <laughs> yeah indeed indeed pamela's just um, made a comment and she says thank you she found it very interesting um and it's uh yeah some things to have a look at and like i said it's it's not necessarily something that's spoken about a lot um i mean for myself personally i'm aware of um different energies and things in in different areas um but i've i don't think i've ever really come across some of the things that you've mentioned today and it's it's just yeah a really different interesting take on things that make sense of what's kind of happening and and how they impact and and yeah it's it's definitely food food for thought um and yeah i'll take a look at um is it Adrian? Is it Adrian? Was that the author of the book? Yes. Um, yes. Here with your home. Um, yeah. Because yeah, it's just I think anything, any type of energy work, whatever you kind of want to look at, everything is beneficial and has its place, and it's finding what's right for you and your horse and your home, and it's yeah, it's it's really good just to have another angle to have a look at. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for letting me, you know, join your community and share. My share. pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, I'm going to um, end the recording. Um, I think um, I don't think there's anything else that anybody needs to ask any questions now. But like I say, I'll add it all. Um, the replay will be available, um, and I'll add Kate's contact details and everything on there for everybody. So, thank you so much for those who have been watching, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope the ones that have watched it on replay also enjoy it. So, take care. Bye bye. Thank you.